Hi, so here we're going to give a demo of our Smart Mirror software available from the Play Store on the Amazon Store called My Smart Mirror. And uh, this is up and running, but um, in the video, we're going to show you um, a base install where I've just literally downloaded the app uh, and I'll configure it to show all this information uh, and we'll explain the settings and kind of what they mean, get you an up and running Smart Mirror. Um, no Raspberry Pis, no uh, SSL in onto uh, weird devices. This is just easy peasy lemon squeezy. Get yourself an Android tablet, purchase our app, and uh, get yourself a, a cheap, easy to use, user friendly smart mirror. Um, we do make smart mirrors. Um, we're called My Smart Mirror. Find us on www.mysmartmirror.co.uk and you can buy a ready made product to save yourself uh, banging one together in your shed. Um, but if you really do want to bang one together in your shed, then um, please purchase our app. Um, we're going to be doing updates to it all the time, uh, and you get the free updates once you've purchased the product. So every um, new feature we come out with, um, you'll, you'll get that for free in the software. Hello, welcome to this My Smart Mirror demonstration of our software. So you should have downloaded the software from the store, get a nice icon, click that and she'll load. Then first choice, so language, English, German, pretty self-explanatory. Then a choice of saving locally or creating a cloud account. So this is about the config. Save locally obviously saves the config down onto the device. Creating a cloud account, a user ID and a password is required. It saves off to our cloud um, system, the configuration, and then it saves it locally as well, but it basically synchronizes. So if you've got a second device, you can change the config on that, and then the first device will pick that change up. So if you want to kind of have a hands-free config change without touching the mirror, that can be quite handy. But for most use cases where you've just got a single device, um, we suggest you just save locally. Then menu items. So we've got a choice 12 or 24 hour clock, and then we've got a, a digital clock or an analog clock. Choose analog clock, you've got six different faces to choose from. Home location, so it wants to know this just so that it can do your local weather for you. So we'll enter in where you live and it'll start to find it. So that's me. Weather, uh, off or on. So this is this is weather icon off or on. This just means do you want, so it'll show uh, the time and date in the top right as in the screenshots and a weather icon. If you don't want a weather icon on, you can override the default on and you can just turn it off, but I'd suggest you keep it on. Temperature unit, you've got the choice of Celsius or Fahrenheit. Then we have this um, time zone system where we divide the day up into three sections. So essentially the morning, 6 a.m., that's the default on, so the mirror will start displaying the information at 6. If you want to change it, then just click that and choose, a, choose another time. So say you're a late riser, you get up at 8 and change that to 8 o'clock. And then kind of the evening period finishes at 11. Again, if you want to run that later till midnight, then just change that to oh, sort of 11.30. Um, and essentially this allows you to choose when you want to display information. So you can define some information just to show in the morning period, some to show in the day, and some to show in the evening, or you can choose to display it all day long. So weather forecast, for example. So we'll choose morning, day, evening, which means it'll show the weather forecast throughout those time periods. Train information, so again we've choose that for all day long. You'll need to obviously choose a local train station that you go from and a destination where you commonly travel to. And this is a UK only at the moment I'm afraid. Um, configure that and it will show us our next two train informations, um, live information. Uh, road traffic, so again this is UK only sadly at the moment. You need to put in a destination, so I'll type in somewhere near me. Oh. Okay, that's filled in, and then the next bit is um, tube information. So if you're a Londoner and you want to see the tubes, you can turn that on. Next one, web page. So this is just it'll render essentially a URL web page that you put in there onto the screen. So we'll do a demo of that with um, the BBC News. So you have to put the URL in the syntax of HTTP colon slash and then double slash. Uh, we'll put in the bbc.co.uk forward slash 
news. Then there's an option here for uh, full screen offer on. That will mean by default it's off, and what it means is it will display the time and the date at the top and the weather, and then it will show the web page on sort of three quarters of the screen um, down below. Now, if you override and do on full screen, then it'll just literally show the web page whole screen. So it depends on what you want to see. Um, maybe play with that setting to see what's your preferred option. Google Calendar will show that all day long. The news, again, we'll select that on all three choices. And then we've got a choice of news providers here. Uh, BBC, CNN, Google, um, Build, Dizeet, and the Reuters. We'll, uh, we'll go for Google News on that. Then you can choose the number of headlines to display on the screen. This is just basically if you've got a huge screen, you can get away with doing 10 items. If you've got a really weeny phone, you might only get away with five without it looking a bit funny. This device is an eight inch tablet. It likes eight headlines. Seems to be a good fit for this. And then update information. So this is how often the data will uh, essentially roll over on the screen because um, obviously everything you choose, it's got lots of information to display. It rolls it over on a time period. So the quickest is 10 seconds and the longest is five minutes. Um, for that rollover period for a demo for you guys obviously well, 10 seconds will be perfect to roll over the information and um, once we're done with the config we're just gonna hit then we'll hit save to save the configuration and that'll either be to the local device or off to the cloud um, it's asking a couple of prompts about grabbing my contacts finding my um, gmail account for my calendar sync so you need to choose account if you've got multiple on device okay on that and then the information is going to roll around so we've got the, the weather forecast there showing us the next five hours uh, and it showed us the next five days. Then we've got the web page display here in that kind of uh, three quarter screen. We've got horrible cookies so we just need to get rid of those by clicking them. Uh, then we've got our Google Calendar showing me my, uh, my schedule. Not very busy apart from the mirror switching off later. Road traffic blank so that typically means that there's actually no, no traffic problems. In a future release, I'll, I'll get them to, to write no problems. Um, tube information, so again, live information, fairly good there, lots of greens. Next train, so live information on time. News headlines from Google. And back to the weather. For the Google um, Calendar, there are some prerequisites you need to check on our website. So if the Google Calendar isn't working, um, please check the website. There's some prereqs for some Google Framework stuff. So this is a Fire OS tablet. This does need the prereqs, and they are detailed on the website. There's four packages you need to install, Google Services, Google Framework, and a couple of others, and it's just required so that Google, for the Google authentication, so it trusts the device for you to make the query, for the app basically to make the query to Google and prove who you are to grab your calendar. Um, once the app's up and running, it's kind of in that rotating mode, it'll do that forever and it won't sleep. Um, if you need to change your mind on some settings, then just uh, touch the screen and you've got the cogs coming up for the settings and you go back to the menu system. You don't really need to change the software that often I'd say I mean when you first set it up you might want to make a few alterations but generally you set it and you forget it um, and yeah save it again and leave it running um, the app if you do kill it or the tablet dies or whatever then when the app relaunches it won't go to the configuration screen by default it always just goes back into the last saved config um, so yeah the only way to go back to the menu after initial install is to go through the cogs icon on there Thank you very much for watching.